one, everyone watching the replay. We are Daniel and Allison with Brosco Keto, and we're going to talk about five things. We're really just going to introduce intermittent fasting to those that are curious about it and who um, wants to know what it would look like if they applied it to their life. But we have been doing keto since February 2018, and we started doing intermittent fasting about April 2018. Is that kind of when you started too? Yeah, we were doing intermittent fasting the Big Cedar. Yeah, that's right. We did. So we, kind of we started. We March. really started pretty close. Pretty off. soon off. Oh, I hear kids. Yeah, he's gonna go at rescue the kids. So first, I'm gonna talk about um, just what intermittent fasting means. And it means basically a pattern of eating. And that pattern can be anything. The pattern can be eating 16 or fasting 16 hours, eating eight hours. It can mean fasting 20 hours and eating four hours. It really doesn't matter. Some people will fast for two days. Um, and the extended fasting, it, the time and the, the eating period varies. It just depends on the person and what they feel works for them. So, see, Hi, Judy. hey Judy, oh, he's so, going to turn on our I'll audio share this to places. He's going to share it to all of our little social media groups. Um, so we've got a few people popping on, but I don't want to delay too much. I want to, um, especially those that are going to watch the replay, I want to respect their time. So, so we've got a couple of people popping on. Um, I'm going to go through kind of five just pointers on intermittent fasting. And then we'll talk about what we do um, personally. And then I'd love for you guys to, while you're coming on, um, to let us know if you are doing intermittent fasting, how long was your longest? Um, anything that you find has been beneficial to you when you intermittent fast. Um, and then if you just have any questions, like I'm curious about this aspect of it, um, that way we can touch on those when we um, start answering questions. Also, if you are popping on, I'd love to know where you are watching from. Um, we're in Arkansas, but I'd love to know. I know there's a couple people from Australia in our group and um, a few other places across the world, and I'd love to know where you're coming up from. Oh, you've done 60 hour fast, Lisa. That's awesome. That's more than I've done. So, whoo, I'll get there. The most I've done is 48. So, um, and that was a stretch. Okay, baby steps, baby steps. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. And why, why would you intermittent fasting? Like, what is the point? Um, something that I have found when I, it, I may say IF. I'm gonna try not to. Um, just intermittent fasting is really long, so the abbreviation is or the what acronym? It's not acronym. No. Acronym. Abbreviation. Abbreviation. It's Either. IF. Um, but I find that when I am intermittent fasting, I have, I feel like I'm more alert. My brain function is like on point. I feel, um, I think the, the phrase, um, like, you know, when you hear people say like, oh, he's hungry for that. Like when he's, when someone is um, going, doing a project or he's like eager to do something, the, the phrase, I don't know if it's really around anymore, but was like, he's really hungry for that. Well, there's a reason for when you're hungry, you have this, this energy. And I really like, I didn't feel that before. I didn't know that was a thing until, um, I did intermittent fasting. And then also when you're trying to lose weight, um, it's a whole lot easier to be calorie deficient when you're intermittent fasting and yes. you're only eating for a certain amount of time of the day. Like for me, I try to stick with one meal a day during the week, which we'll go, go into that. But it's a whole lot easier to stick to my smaller amount of calories than it is um, when you're eating three meals and trying to stick to a smaller amount of calories. You really have to like think about where you're putting those calories throughout your day. So that's another benefit of it. Um, and there's less cooking as well when you're intermittent fasting, which I don't like to cook and I really don't like to clean the kitchen. Um, and then there's also autophagy, which I'll go into later. Um, I love autophagy. It's like my favorite thing right now. And then also, um, especially with keto, with, with anything losing weight, our whole goal is to reduce insulin because insulin stops the, the human growth hormone, which is what promotes 
weight loss, but insulin actually stops that from being used. It also does a lot of other things. Now, insulin is good. You need insulin in order to survive, but you just don't want too much. And so every time you eat, you spike insulin. It doesn't matter if it's carbs or if it's sugar or if it's protein or whatever. It, every time you eat, you spike insulin. And so when you are eating less, you have less insulin. So the reason I love intermittent fasting, it's really helping me on top of keto, um, reducing my, I have insulin resistance. So it's really helping me reduce my insulin resistance. Do you have anything to add? No. I, <laughs> He's just listening. I, I, I did all the research. No, stuff, when we but. started, uh, the thought of going till noon to eat was like dumb. Like I didn't. <laughs> I, cause we I, like food. Well, I was used to eat like you eat oatmeal for breakfast, and by like eat that at seven thirty or eight. When I get to work or right before I leave home, and by like eight forty-five or nine, I'm just like ravenously hungry. Yeah. So the thought of not eating in the morning and delaying eating anything until until noon was like it it wasn't possible, and then. Like a week in, I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, oh, it's 1.30. I should probably eat something. Think about eating. And that's kind of... Um, uh, can can y'all hear, can everyone hear us? Can anyone let us know if the volume is okay? Because we've had, us. I know, but I, um, I posted that. Uh, but we've had audio issues the past couple weeks. So just want to make sure that we're, that you can actually hear what we're saying. And just let us know I'm that. Guessing. I'm going to go on to this, the yeah. second thing, which is a lot of people ask, um, I see, I've been asked this and I see it on a lot of other forums, if you need to be fat adapted before you start intermittent fasting. And that's definitely no, like you don't have to. Um, there's a lot of people that only do intermittent fasting and don't even do keto. Um, I know my mom, that's how she started. Um, and yeah, my God, they, can they can hear us. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of other people, that's all that they do is intermittent fasting. Um, to lose weight, which is it is beneficial that way. We are on, adding that on top of keto because of how keto is benefiting our lives. Um, and intermittent fasting just kind of boosts all that along. So you definitely do not have to be fat adapted. If you start keto and intermittent fasting at the same time, um, you will definitely boost your fat adaptation, ad adaptation faster, but you will also feel that keto flu um, probably even more severely. So be sure that, because that's what it will feel like on intermittent fasting as well. That keto flu ish, you'll have the, you know, the, the kind of dizziness, the yeah. fatigue, the headaches, the, just because just like when you're transfer, you're uh, moving on to keto or any diet, if you're changing the way your body naturally functions, it's going to whine and complain. And I have something to add to whine and complain. Okay. It's going to whine and complain. And so you're going to need to to expect that, but also know how to combat it. Um, be sure you get your electrolytes, your magnesium, your potassium, um, and uh, your sodium, just those those things. So drinking um, salt water, drinking, I love drinking pickle juice. He thinks I'm gross. That's weird. I just, it helps. I thought she was pregnant the first time she pulled out a jar of pickle juice and just started drinking it. <laughs> no. what, did you, what did you, you were craving pickle juice and something one day? I don't, even I don't know. know. Scared the genies <laughs> out of me. Like this is, we don't have time for this. Uh -huh. um, on the just why you would add intermittent fasting for me, something that it wasn't why I added it, but it um, it turned out to be a benefit. July and August were like the um, they were the busiest months that I've had in years and. Because I was doing intermittent fasting and and keto, and I was fat adapted, and I'm not my my days, especially those busy days where I'm traveling a lot, my days weren't scheduled around eating. Because if I and some days I didn't eat till five or six, but I had plenty of stored fat to pull from. Some days I did like get get back into town from traveling all day and have to kind of rack my brain and remember, remember if I ate anything. Did so you take that no, so. Uh, just when you do that, you and that's part of just changing your mentality is you take food out of 
like food is no longer something that you schedule your day around because you eat because you need to eat not because your body is angry at you yeah it's um, very freeing you know, i want to address surely the the what, keto what she said the, first uh, Shirley asked that she started Monday. She's already in ketosis. A large amount. Her friend is in ketosis a large amount, and she only has trace. Um, the keto strips, the P strips, all they do is measure. They're just a yes or no. They're not a level of ketosis. They're what all they're measuring is the ketones that are passed through your body unused into your urine. So, if you're active, it's it's not an indication of any level of ketosis or not in ketosis. People it's just, will argue with that. Just they so will, but know. your body burns ketones for energy, just like caffeine. Like if you, like you're any, any, it's ketones are fuel. So you're burning them for energy and you pass the unused ones into your urine and they come out. So if you're like using, vitamins. yeah. So if you're using everything that you're producing, you're just going to have trace amounts. If you're, not using many if you're if you have a low-key day or you just you're producing way more than you need then you're you're going to pass a lot more through so it's not those are not an indication of really in ketosis or not in ketosis they as far as i understand i'm not a doctor but as far as my understanding and what i've researched is all the p-strips can tell you is you're either in ketosis or out of ketosis ignore the color scales just if, if you're registering anything your body is producing ketones and and you're good the you need to test your blood and stuff to do which there there are some great meters in fact i have if you guys um i can link it somewhere um our i have a group or a list set up on our amazon we're not amazon influencers so we don't get anything from it it's just convenient for you i have a list of things that we would buy from amazon if we could we get a lot of our things locally but on that i did put the um blood the ketone blood meter kit that you can get it's a good price um just know that those ketone strips are about between a dollar to five dollars a piece depending on what kind of meter you get so look at that the meters may be cheap but look at the strips because that's where they they get their money and and consider also and you're and I, I understand it's really easy to jump in with both feet and want to do all of the fancy stuff and all of that. But, man, the more you get into it, hopefully, and what it's become for us is not a, I need to lose weight as fast as I can and, like, run into this so I can lose all this weight in six months and then get back to normal. This will, for a lot of people, is going to become like a lifestyle that. because you feel better you know, it just it, there's so many benefits to it beyond weight loss. So, and I would, and I'd really advise at least I do what you want to do, but at least consider just listen to your body for a month or two, and and you'll know. I have never I've never used the ketone chips. I've never measured my ketones, but I lost 60 pounds and. And our breath was both bad. Months. I had, like, I had the really, breath's bad. Yeah, I had yeah, super bad. bad. I had, you know, <laughs> I had super bad dry mouth. Um, that's, and so there's plenty of ways to tell that you're in ketosis, and all of those again, it's it's the same as, like, getting so wrapped up and gaining a pound one day or something like that. You're not one. Those are those are good signs, but but that your body is doing what it's supposed to do and those are a natural cycle but also just and don't look at this as you have to be perfect every day because if you do and you get wrapped up in those things you're setting yourself up for just stress but and <clears throat> so if you started on monday and i would i would say just like i said you you can you can make your own choice and decide what's best for you you know how how you handle stress and things like that, but uh, just consider just taking a couple. I don't know where to look, so I'm sorry. I'm looking everywhere. I need to look there. Just consider taking even just a couple weeks and just listen to your body. You're either going to lose weight or you're not going to lose weight. Uh, it is normal and healthy and completely natural and a process of your body to bounce in your weight and to. To stall out for a little bit, I wrote a post on that, I think, on Monday on our page. You can go back and read that or just search for Daniel and you'll find it. But that in our group. stalls and weight bounces are signs that your body is putting stuff where fat used to be. 
So if you're stalling out for a little bit or you bounce a couple pounds here and there, that is a sign that you are doing something right. So don't and celebrate those. It's yeah. those are not. Um, and she's looking at me because I'm getting off fasting. So back to fasting, mm-hmm. autophagy. Well, What's okay. autophagy, Allison? Love you. Being snarky. And be cute. Um, okay, so yeah, we talked about I why. Feel like that was sarcastic. A little bit. Why, <laughs> why would you want to be doing um, intermittent fasting? And um, do you have to be fat adapted? So we covered those two. And then my favorite thing about why is a whole point because it's autophagy and that is so important to me right now because I have lost well over 70 pounds and with that comes a lot of times some extra skin Um, and so what I've learned about autophagy is it's actually your body's way of taking out the trash Um, your body can once you reach a a certain level of fasting, usually you you reach it between 12 and 18 hours, depending on the body. Um, But your body actually turns into this recycle mode where it actually searches out damaged or dead cells and gets rid of them, recycles them, and turns them into new cells. And it does that with even skin cells. It does that with damaged cells. And um, what I'm hoping for, I'm really interested, I'm still researching, but like I have PCOS. So is that going to do that in my ovaries? Is it going to do that like if someone is developing cancer cells? Is it going to do that with the cancer cells? I don't know all that um, just yet. I'm still researching. But autophagy is something that you're able to tap into with intermittent fasting. Once you fasted between, you get there between 12 and 18, sometimes 20 hours. So that's a big reason why I choose to do the one meal a day. So I'll go 24 hours, 23, 24 hours, and I'll eat um, for an hour, and then we'll go into that more what I'm doing later. And a, uh, add stuff in the oven. Oh yeah, he's good. Uh, <laughs> autophagy is yeah, it's just a great example of why, like, you should always be researching and learning things. Because it was discovered in 2016 by a doctor in China, so it's new, and I've yet to see anything that says like this is just no, whack of science. Like, like it's yeah. it's a it's a big it's deal, a but it's discovery. it's They're a really two year old cool. discovery. So again, that's like when when they tell you that they decided back in the 70s that you really need grains as the bottom of the pyramid and the both most important thing. Like they're they're figuring out new things. We're not doctors. Mm-mm. Talk to your doctor. Uh, and again, there are something that an experience that we have that I feel like is pretty unique is we've uh, we've seen five, six doctors between us, between your OB and mm-hmm. walk-in clinics. Out of those, we've only had one doctor, and she was just she was completely wrong and misinformed. But well, only only one doctor. And you didn't has, know me. In my yes, story. It was at a walk-in clinic in Branson, and she was the only doc that we have interacted with that that said keto was bad, that didn't fully support what we were doing, um, and and she was under the impression that ketosis was the same as ketoacidosis. Mm-hmm. So I, I I see a cardiologist twice a year for an ongoing thing, and that he's. Totally the cardiologist, good with it. Yes, the cardiologist so, is like, yes, eat your fat. Yeah, <laughs> it's so not he's, fat. Yeah, he was. He likes it. He recommends it to his patients at Tyler like when he feels like it's it would be helpful. So, and we've we've been blessed with that. I feel like in reading stories and stuff, a lot of people have very different experiences and have. Yeah. So. <laughs> Where are you just, going? Go get the stuff yeah, out of them. It's not. I don't know. If it's right yeah. or not. He's trying to make. Um, I'm making y'all pumpkin bread. He's trying. He's working. He's experimenting. No, that scared me. I stuck those other two back in there. Oh, no. Uh, he's oh, experimenting oh, with that. keto pumpkin bread, and um, this is first, and it's going very well. Um, nothing. What did you say? It smells great. Um. Oh, another thing with um autophagy is. I'm going to read this to you because I took it out of um, someone else's. Uh, let me hold it up here so you can see my face. It says a disrupt, a disrupt, a disrupted autophagy, meaning people that don't allow themselves, like they eat from the moment they wake up, say it's six. Oh, you're loud. 
the moment they wake up at 6 until when they go to bed at like 11, that would be a disrupt in autophagy. Um, so disrupt in autophagy. Hold on, I want to make noise really quick. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> really that's loud. for y'all. Except for they're not going to eat it. Okay, disrupt in autophagy has been linked to Parkinson's de de disease. Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, and other disorders that appear in the elderly. Mutations in autophagy genes can also cause genetic disease. Um, disturbance, disturbances in autophagy and the autophic machinery in your body um, can also be linked to cancer. So basically what that's saying is we need to be, if you're not going to do intermittent fasting, at least give yourself 12 hours at least of not eating, um, which is kind of intermittent fasting, but you need to allow yourself to do that. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so how do you start? How do you start intermittent fasting? Don't what do you need? Me. Don't you tell me. What do you do first? I highly recommend, now um, I'll, I'll go into my story in a second, but I highly recommend starting slow. So say you eat at seven o'clock, you have breakfast, you eat lunch at 11.30 or 12, and then you eat again dinner at six o'clock. So instead of being like, all right, I'm going to do 16 hours of fasting and just eight hours and just dive into it, um, you're going to stress yourself out more than likely. I mean, there's some people out there that just do it and are great. Um, but if you're not already, especially if you're not already doing keto, so you're not already fat adapted, um, it's going to stress yourself out. What I highly recommend doing is just push your window, your eating window is what they call it, Keep, close it a little bit more each day or maybe even each week. Say for three days you have your breakfast at 9 instead of 7 and maybe push your dinner up. I know with some people their work schedules it makes it a little bit iffy so according to your schedule you set your eating window and you can adjust it the way you want. It's You're in the control of that. It doesn't matter. So people will ask like okay when's the best time for me to eat? That depends on your schedule. You're in charge of that. When's the best time to start? That's your, you get to decide that. That's the beauty of this is these are just a blueprint. I keep saying that to everyone about keto. This is just a blueprint for you to look at, compare yourself, and then fit yourself in there the best to suit you. Um, so yeah, start slow, slow, skip breakfast. So you're, so you move to set or to nine o'clock and then maybe move it to 10 o'clock. And maybe even move it to 11, 11.30. And then next thing you know, you're not even eating breakfast and you're not even hungry for it. Well, know what your goal is. Like if your goal is to event in like over two weeks to move to not eating until noon. And on day two, you're not hungry at 10 in the morning. Then just go as long as you can. Eat when you get hungry. But I mean, if you're... I... I didn't really build into it. Like the first couple of days, I was, I would, but I very quickly just became where I just wasn't hungry yeah. in the morning. So I got to eat it to a 24 window where I was eating pretty much between noon and four really quickly. Um, and, and that's, and we, yeah. at that point, we were fat adapted and that just, we kind of, we kind of just fell into it. Um, if those that are jumping on or those who came on after we we introduce i want i'd love for you guys to interact shoot us some some hearts and some even some happy faces or whatever and or then, questions or questions i'd love comments. i'd love for you to tell us if you have done intermittent fasting um if you have just yes i've, I've done it i do it um how long you've done it if you have questions about it specifically um also something i'm gonna go on next is so we've done um why would you why would you add it? Why would you do intermittent fasting? Um, do you have to be fat adapted? And then we, we talked about autophagy, how to start, and now what? So you're starting intermittent fasting. What am I going to, what can I eat? What can I drink? Well, you're not going to eat. Um, but then what can you drink? Well, the whole point is to not, um, not induce an insulin response. Um, an insulin will spike when you eat anything when you chew even chewing ice um, when you chew gum when you taste anything sweet so when people are drinking their black coffee but putting a little bit of their sugar substitute um, in there that tastes sweet and that will spike an insulin response so that won't be a 
a fast, it will still spike a, a response. Um, and uh, there was a study, I wanted to say this fascinates me, and kind of, it just weirds me out. There was a study done, and I cannot remember who did it to quote them, I'm so sorry. Um, but they had two groups, one group swooshed regular water in their mouth. Now, they did their, they tested their glucose levels, but one, one group swished water in their mouth and then spit it out. The other group, uh, three groups, sorry. They had three groups. First group swished water in the mouth. The second group swished sugar water. And then third group swished like, um, the, like a substitute, like, give me a substitute. I'm going blank here. Monk fruit or whatever with their water. Um, and then, so they test all their glucose levels like 30 minutes later both the water was fine the water one was fine both the sugar and the sugar substitute both had insulin response and that was just because it tasted something sweet um i think it was oh dr um barry is the one that told us about it but i can't remember who it was he also said that he was saying that i mean he he always likes to say like i mean thousands of years ago he always says that laugh, makes me laugh every time but thousands of years ago when our ancestors ate something sweet that automatically meant that they were eating fruit that automatically they were eating something they didn't have any of these no calorie sugar substitutes or no carb sugar substitutes he's shushing our dog so sorry um so whenever they were eating something sweet it automatically may, meant to the body we need to react because we're about to get something we're about to get sugar so we need to spike insulin our bodies still do that today regardless of what we now have to put into them so that, yeah, anything sweet, like even sugar-free gum, which I was an advocate and loved my sugar-free gum. I still have a full pack. Okay, I've taken a few pieces out of it. But, yeah, that will spike your insulin. So I choose not to do that. Okay, so you can have water. I like sparkling water, which is what I've got right here. Um, you can have black coffee. Um, you can have tea. Um, black or green, I would say with the herbals, just be careful with that because a lot of them have like, um, they have things in them that taste sweet. Like one of my favorite is the um, Yogi Egyptian licorice and it actually tastes sweet. And so I choose not to do that when I'm fasting because I don't want that to spike insulin and ruin my fast. Um, you can also have um, apple cider vinegar. That is really good when you're fasting, which is any time, but because um, that continues to promote um, blood sugar drop so it will reduce help you reduce blood sugar and um, promote digestion so I usually always have that um, before I eat anything anyways just to coat my stomach so Does those MCT are the, typically break your fast yes because of the calories um, yeah now that is that is from mm -hmm. my research 50 calories well, break of, uh, and that, there's, there's a to, lot of discrepancy in this and, and I'm gonna say there's there is people saying, no, you can have this. And, oh, you can have broth, too, as long as there's no calories. Um, highly recommend um, using making your own. We have that bone broth recipe video that we have on our group and on our YouTube page. Um, but when you buy the broth in the, in the little cubes, a lot of those have um, uh, flavoring. Of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? artificial flavoring and that can spike your insulin um but yeah you can have broth but um when it comes to having a bulletproof coffee mct oil um dr barry um those who follow him he thinks that you he thinks it's fine to have that on he doesn't feel like he it breaks his ketosis personally i know it i know it breaks mine it it might not break daniel's it, it just might not i i'm not I, don't, I can't speak for him when it comes to that. Um, I'm telling you what I've done from my research and what works for me and what's not. Um, if you are really sensitive and, like me, have insulin resistance, highly recommend just not doing anything with calories if you're really wanting to tap into that because when you're insulin resistant, your body will just pump out the insulin just willy-nilly. Um, so that's why. So and if you're we, having good results and you're making progress, it, don't get hung up on it. I mean, that's, yeah. let's say if, if you start doing the MCT oil and you start stall notice now. that you stall like more than a normal stall or you start getting like 
Lisa, wants, you... she asked how I know. I have a Hold glucose up. blood meter, um, and I I got it when I was I had gestational diabetes like five years ago, and I was pregnant, um, and I've just had it ever since. And I will actually check that. Um, I'll check it 30 minutes and an hour after I have something, testing it to see if um, it spikes my, like if I have a glucose raise in my, if you had anywhere between 60 and 100, you're okay. If it goes over that, then. Um, but without doing that, and do you, said you had a little MCT to your black coffee. Do you feel hungry after you have that? Or yeah, do you, a do you notice a difference in hunger when you add MCT and don't add MCT? That, that would be something you could do without a meter, just a, a kind of self-diagnosis, go a week without it, go a week with it. And if you notice that when you're adding it, you get hungry, then you're giving your body enough calories to break ketosis and start eating something or start, start using calories for fuel instead of stored fat. Right. You're, you're switching processes and then it's going to run out of that really fast. And then because 50 calories isn't a lot. And then it's going to have to go through the process of switching well, back. tablespoon. Most people put a tablespoon of MCT oil in their coffee, and that's about 100 calories. Yeah. Um, uh, and someone asked if it was straight um, apple cider vinegar you can have. Yes, you can have straight. You can um, dilute it. I don't recommend putting, um, uh, which I like doing before, is putting it in water with some lemon. There's um, the sweetness and the calories in the lemon may, may ruin your fast. That's debatable, too. Um, but the apple cider vinegar, you can get, I get, I have capsules. I used to do it just straight. Um, but after doing it multiple times a day, I felt like I might be hurting my teeth. Yeah. Um, it's because I didn't like drinking teeth. it. Yeah. I didn't like drinking it through a straw. I tried that. Um, and so I actually found capsules. Um, you can find them online. I think, I think I put those in our Amazon list. You can find them online if that, if that suits you better, but yeah, straight or um, you can dilute it in water if you want. Some people like that. Okay, then you're you're good, Lisa. That she's less hungry with MCT and she has a meter, and my ketones go up, and glucose goes down. Uh, yeah. How that's long good. have you been doing keto? He's asking Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Um, how long? How long well, have you well, been doing keto? I was gonna say. All right. So what we do? What what is my like? What is my intermittent fasting plan? What is his? Um, when I first started. I really just fell into it. Like I had planned. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do keto first. And then when I was researching keto, intermittent fasting was coming up my research. I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, I'll, I'll step into that eventually. Um, and then it got to the point where it was like 10 o'clock, 1030, and I wasn't hungry. And I was like, I'm not going to eat. I just, I don't, I kind of lost my appetite. And I was like, I'm just not going to eat. And then by about 11, 30, 12, I was getting hungry. So I ate. And I realized I was already stepping into it. And it was, I was fat adapted, and I guess that's why it was so easy for me, but I, I just kind of fell into intermittent fasting, which I understand is, is very lucky because um, some people really struggle with it, so I don't want to negate the fact that it sometimes it is just really hard and it's a struggle. Um, but so eventually, I think starting in June is when I started transitioning to one meal a day. Actually, it was July. I think it was July that I started transitioning to one meal a day. So what I do is um, about... 1230 I'll make my bone broth which I do that I used to do um, bulletproof coffee I used to make my little fat coffee and now basically it's a fat bone broth uh, my my bone broth latte I make that and while I'm drinking that we've got a fly in here while I'm drinking that um, don't close my windows mm -hmm. I've got those for a reason Just messing with the computer um, while I'm drinking my bone broth latte I will then make my lunch which consists of the bone broth latte is between 350 and 400 calories. So that's a good amount of calories that I'm having right there with those fats. Um, I put my nutritional yeast in there. And so that's really good. And then I will also then um, make my protein and my veggies. Um, I like doing, you know, the zucchini noodles and protein, and then I'll put um, just some fat in there. So with that all together, I'm, I'm at my calories with, with my deficit. Um, I usually eat about 1250 calories between 1200 and 1250 calories. So I get all that within that hour, give myself an hour to eat and then I'm done. I'm done for the day. Now that is Monday through Friday. Um, and it's been so much easier because usually my cravings for like chocolate and wine and like chips and all that stuff is at night. 
but I've already closed my eating window and so I just don't eat. So it's really helped me just to be free from, I'm just not eating. So mm -hmm. I don't have to fight that. Yeah, that, that is a very... It's, it's so yeah. freeing. Um, and then just only thinking about one meal a day. I don't like, I, it stresses me out to think about all my food and how to measure it all out. So it's just been really freeing. Again, it's just been really nice to only think about that one meal. Um, I get it done and it's done. I'm done eating for the day. And I don't think about food at all, which is just so nice. On the weekends, I'll do more of a 16-8. So I'll fast for 16 hours, which is kind of, that's what you pretty much do, right? No, I do. I, I'm... He's really I'm, flexible. I'm transitioning because I'm, I'm pretty much at my goal weight and maintaining yeah. well, that. On the weekends, I'll do 16-8. Um, so I'll, I'll eat lunch and then I'll yeah. eat dinner with him. My, what I say I'm doing is is a four twenty four hour eating window and typically when i'm actually doing it it's from noon to four okay. is when i eat um yeah not my noon rolls around and i may or may not be hungry so um, yeah because you will move it sometimes you'll come home at night and you're like i've been eating all day so he'll yeah. eat i have a weird where i i do video production and just have a very random schedule so i may i may eat at 11 because i'm not going to have an opportunity to eat again until six. So, um, um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. Um, so no, going no. back to Lisa, then the only, she said she, she, so she, Lisa, you've been on it for eight yeah. weeks. You've been doing keto for eight weeks, which is awesome. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like that's, that's messing you up at all so i don't see any reason to even yeah and you're do what works for you there are we're gonna we're going to share there's a lot of a lot of groups that just share lots of information that is conflicting and that's kind of low carb but not keto or some weird like i've seen a lot of a lot of Dirty keto, lazy well, a keto. lot of people saying that like protein is your only goal, fat is a limit, and carbs are a limit, and really you just need to make sure you eat all your protein, and that's not that's something, but that's not keto. Keto by definition is 70 to 75 percent of your calories from fat. Like that's it is a a keto other than the no carb, no sugar, or no no sugar, no, no grains, no sugar. The the strict keto eating a ketogenic diet, eating keto is maintaining a ratio of fat to protein so that you're training your body to burn fat pretty much exclusively. Mm -hmm. So you're, I tried to give her an analogy last night that I didn't, didn't work. really work, but basically you don't, burning fat is a different process than burning protein or burning carbs for fuel. So you want your body and it takes different enzymes and it's just a different process. It's a complex process. So you want to eat mostly fat. You want most of your calories to come from fat so that your body is already producing and has everything it needs because burning fat for energy, it's the same process, whether it's eaten fat or stored fat. So mm -hmm. you want to eat that high amount of fat so that once your body is done with the fat that you've eaten, it's not going to have this big process change. Um, you also don't want to eat, as I understand it, a ton of protein because then your body's going to burn the fat, switch to protein, and break the cycle of burning fat. And then when it goes back to fat, you're going to get hungry because it's going to have to take a little bit to. Well, and it takes longer to then also process that protein. And the whole time it's processing, it's boosting insulin. Protein yeah. will, if you have an, ex an excess amount of protein, it will continue to keep the insulin spike. Yeah. I'm not really. I don't really know any more of the science behind that. That's just what I've, what I've studied. Um, Lisa, you asked if we exercise, um, have not exercised really at like through the, the initial process. I started running again. I love running. I missed it so much. Um, I started that again and I like running outside. Um, we don't, we're not a part of a gym, but on our, we have a little homestead we're right outside of the city and where, where we're at on our road, main road, they're building um, a big like subdivision. subdivision. 
and the trucks and stuff that, that drive there like all hours and um, it's just really dangerous so I've kind of stopped there's no sidewalk so I've stopped running but I think you just get a treadmill yeah we just gotta get it set up uh, um, so I'll start doing that because I just it's something I really love I do need to start um, doing arm weights because I do have like just from losing weight I've got heat up and things so I feel uh, like I need a tone and so I will but it's not I didn't exercise to lose weight and we we have a little farm so we have and we're, we're active on the weekends so we it's not like we're we're just completely sedentary but we did I, I rock climb some but we didn't like we were not intentional we weren't going to the gym we were not intentionally exercising 98 and a half percent of our weight loss was exclusively from diet uh, okay. I mean, we were neither of us were doing enough ongoing exercise, especially during the week, to to lose weight that way. Um, we love being active. Yeah, but that's I especially because I can now. I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. be active before. It would just. That's the thing. When I started keto, it was like that was kind of. It seemed like okay, if this is gonna work, this is great because I physically cannot exercise. I, I just I have too many things going on. Too much inflammation. Um, yeah, the weight was just ridiculous. I, I just, I could not exercise. So that was nice to be able, I mean, I was recovering from surgery and yeah. still losing weight in bed because I was eating keto. It may have just been pickles and deviled eggs, but yeah. that's and what that's I was the, doing. And that's a big deal because historically, like, uh, just our part of our story is every time Allison would get to a point where she was starting to get healthy and lose weight and do and kind of overcome some of those challenges, something health-wise would come up and she'd be back in bed, wouldn't be able to exercise and, um, and would at times not really eating much at all, just the, the cortisol, just that stress mm -hmm. response is causing her to gain weight. So this was, and this was the, the first time, was this is really the first thing that she's been able to maintain through a major health problem and still have success with. Yeah. Um, so, um, Lisa, biggest the struggle is managing protein. protein yeah. Love my meat, and at times go over my macros by a little. Um, what kind of meat are you eating? Well, it, that doesn't, that does is, matter. I'll that, say, it well, she asked if it answer. would. Oh, okay. Well, um, she, is it better to add more fat? That just depends on your honestly your calories. If you if you're trying to lose weight, you do still want to stick with a calorie deficiency deficient. Yes. So you. Right. you um, if you are already at that or even above that and your your macros um, percentages are off um, I would say just just stop and then and then start again tomorrow I mean the the idea that each day so, is a new day um, I, I can't I can't in good conscience tell you to change your steak eating habits. That's I just we love our steak. Whatever you want to do, we're, do we're that. big meat eaters. Put too. butter on it. Make a compound butter. Put no, I'm I'm. He's serious. I'm saying that's how you make a good steak. Just put butter on it. Let it mix it. How do you make your steak? Do you make it in a pan or on a grill or in the oven? Steak <laughs> in, in the oven. Um, You've made steak, good steak in the oven no, before. No, I've you finished, seared I've finished, finished it. steak you in the oven. But and add but like that sounds like a cop out. Add butter to whatever you're eating to add fat to it. Um, <laughs> make a con, make an herb butter, Pickles and, and just keep that in the fridge and put some of that on your steak. Toss vegetables in a little bit of butter. That'll add. It'll add calories, that's, but it will also. That's what I do when I'm sauteing is, my spinach a little bit. I just throw a couple tablespoons of butter in there. It tastes so good, and it makes my macros look really good. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what you're doing. No, um, this this chipotle sour cream oh, that I yeah, just posted. That's something we use with lean meats a lot, and we make mm -hmm. it's with we pork. make it and keep it in the fridge. So if we're doing table, if we're doing pork loin or we're doing. Um, Pork loin, especially when you like make a bunch of it and it's sitting in the fridge, it gets really dry sometimes. He makes it good, but sorry, uh, I'm trying to. No, that's. So I like putting the sauce. He just or, linked the or sauce chicken on breast, it. and that's. Any, I also dip my meat. my veggies in it. I like dipping my bell peppers in it. That's what I do. Ribeye has plenty of fat already. You're good. Um, but again, if you wanna, when okay, when you bring it in, grill always grilled. Okay. Um, 
in the winter times, I would encourage you to try it in a cast iron skillet, sear it on both sides, or get a sous vide cooker. If you have never done a sous vide sous -vide. steak, it's like magical. You'll. It makes me look like I can actually. Cook. I don't. I don't cook steaks on the grill anymore, which is a big deal. Um, but when you bring it in and let it rest, put a pat of butter on top of it. Let the butter melt over it and just soak in. If you do, I love that we can lose you know, weight and eat butter because yeah. I love butter, you guys. So I tell like, people, we I lost I lost 60 pounds on a diet where the staple ingredients are bacon and cheese. Um, and vegetables. I, we're I'm we're a big, two of the staple ingredients are okay, bacon two. and cheese. Yeah, I'm a big advocate of getting your veggies in. So, yeah, that's... But if you, if you like kitchen gadgets... Oh, my gosh, he built an entire, like... He built on an entire yeah, we, place for all of kitchen gadgets. Oh, don't do that. that oh, gosh. That closet over there, we added on. That is full of all of our... That's full of Sorry, all of our kitchen road stuff. Trip. <laughs> so, that's... Instant pot, sous vide cooker, all, all the all the things. Um, but yeah, try a sous vide. I think we're and totally shifting gears. I, I don't. But if you don't, the Anova, um, we did. That's the Anova yeah, sous vide. It's the cooker. Anova sous vide cooker, A N O V A. We'll add it to our Amazon list. Um, yeah, I can do that. That's if you don't know what sous vide is, you're cooking in. I think it tech like under vacuum. I think is what that actually means in French. Um, but you're cooking, basically you put the meat in a bag, you submerge the bag in water, and the sous vide cooker circulates and holds a, a steady temperature. So typically like a ribeye, any steak, you would cook at 136 degrees for like an hour or two. So that it is medium rare throughout from edge to edge, and then you throw it in a skillet, a really, really hot cast iron skillet. That's that one. That's um, awesome. Yeah, why well, you throw it in a really hot skillet for a minute on each side, and then you have, because on a grill, you have really high heat on the outside, so to get the middle cooked, you have to overcook the outside. So this is, um, yeah, low heat for a long time, and it just gets, and it's, it's fork tender. Like, when you pull it out of the bag to put it in the, um, in the skillet, it just falls apart. So that is, uh... Okay, this is our... I'm tagging our Amazon list. There we go. Do you count did every veggie carb? Yeah, it did. It all. Okay. There you go. Um, Lisa asked, do we count every veggie carb? Do you hear different trains of thought? Yes, there are a lot of different trains of thought. Um, personally, I'll just tell you what I do personally. I just count my net carbs. Um, but with that, I also do not count my cruciferous vegetables. Where am I looking? There I am. Um, I don't, and there's, you can find a list of cruciferous vegetables. You can go online and type in cruciferous vegetables and it'll give you a list. Um, so I do not count those to my net carbs. If I did, getting my, you know, seven cups of spinach and kale and all that stuff, I would max out on my carbs. Um, wait, I mean, I would max out every day. And those those nutrients in that is so vital, especially on the keto diet, um, getting your vitamin K2, getting your vitamin A, getting, those are so essential um, that it's more important to me. And this is where, like, if you go, if you watch Dr. Berg videos, um, he is an advocate of this as well. And I, I agree with him. A lot of people don't. And I totally accept that. Um, it's totally their choice. I'm not going to force what I do and what I think is correct onto you. It's your choice, but that's what I do. I don't, I don't count those um, to my, my daily net carbs. What do you do? I don't track my daily he carbs. Track daily carbs. I remember I tracked for about two weeks just to get a feel for it. And then I'm a big advocate of tracking. Yes. He's not. She is. I, if I'm, yeah. And he still the, lost a lot of weight. The goal is to lose weight and be healthy. I felt great. I was losing weight at a at a steady pace. So I don't, it just wasn't worth my time to track. I also yeah. don't have the underlying health issues that she does. I, she has a bunch of health issues yeah. that, that this is making a 
world of difference for her. So it's it's worth her energy to track. But with that as well, um, if I okay, this last weekend when he was making all the breads, they were all keto. Oh, what's that clock in my head? I thought it was the oven like cooling down. Oh no, mom that gave clock me. Is so you are loud. shaking the it's, table. No, it's the clock. No, you're shaking the table. Um that clock is so loud. It is very loud. I grew up with this clock and I like it a lot. Anyways, um Daniel made a bunch of keto breads, testing things out, and then we did a few lives and um they were so good. But I didn't have I do not have good um what's the word I'm looking for? Response. No. Self control. Self control. Self control. I do not have good self control when it comes to keto breads, especially when I'm like it's keto. I mean I can have that, right? So I had about all my calories and then some worth of just keto bread. No veggies. No, he, he did end up making me veggies and some actual protein later in the day um, because I needed it. But on Sunday, even though I had everything that was keto friendly, just because I was up in my carbs, um, my net carbs, because it is, you know, um, they did have net carbs in it. I was up in that. I was so sick. I felt like I was having the flu again on Sunday morning. Didn't go to church, couldn't function. It was it was bad. Only because that was my I mean that was my response. He ate the same thing and more and was fine. Totally I fine. know she's really hard selling these biscuits, but if you want to make them, and that that was They're, a sales pitch. That was made her feel bad the next no, day. No, just don't eat like There's the, four to six of these. But no, I, I had like, I had. I ate eight to ten and I was fine. Yeah, he was fine. She and that's that's the difference. Like, he'll eat an apple um, on a random occasion. He'll have an apple and be fine the next day. Like, jump right back into ketosis. That's just the way his body works. Mine, it takes me three to four days to get back into ketosis. I am horribly insulin resistant, even though this is helping. I just can't get off of it because it's... It's helping so much, no. and my body reacts so poorly um, when I get off of it. That's just not worth it to me. So I'm, I am very passionate about being strict keto, about being um, tracking everything and and weighing. I weigh everything. Um, I am so strict about that because and passionate about it because of the life change it's given me. And so those that also have these issues and these autoimmune diseases and chronic inflammation and um, insulin resistance and all these things, I am your advocate. And if you want to come to me, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, I'll help you walk through it um, the way that I did to help resolve these issues. I mean, my autoimmune diseases, I had so what are you doing? Yeah, um, I had just so many issues and symptoms and just, oh, it was horrible. The migraines, the, oh, it was bad. Chronic inflammation, I could I mean, when I got inflamed, I couldn't even open the doorknob. No. Um, really but it's, bad. it's really bad. It's just not there. I mean, I don't have, I can't have gluten on keto, but I'm not going to go eat gluten if I cheat because I have celiac disease and that would be ridiculous. But um, the symptoms have all gone down yeah. because of keto. So I'm not going to get off of it. But he, yeah. he doesn't have that underlying. He feels... Amazing. I ate, keto. I ate horrible in August, and it took about two or three weeks to, because I was traveling to little towns in Arkansas, and they don't have like, there's, they don't have keto food there. It's all fried. <laughs> it's and, all home and it's cooking. All awesome. Grandma, oh, so, so good. <laughs> but I, I still only eat. ate like, I still kind of fasted. I okay. didn't eat breakfast. Hold on. They went out of town for a shoot last week. He and his dad. They went to a restaurant. It was the worst experience of my life. I am it was, so proud of I him. Heard, I heard so the most. I heard the most horrifying phrase that I have heard since I started keto. So we order, and I get my chicken breast with the side of veggies, and hold the bread, hold the potatoes, and she she does that, and she's she's about to walk off, and she says the bread bar is included with your order if you want to go. Over there while you wait for your food. The bread, the bread bar. bar, guys. Not a salad bar. It was like a salad bar, but instead of bar. like 
instead of different vegetables, go over there. instead of different vegetables, like instead oh, of God. mushrooms <laughs> and tomatoes, it was like breadsticks and rolls and cornbread okay, and you're gonna stuff. It was, it was awful. But I went and looked at it and still. Oh, you did look at yes. it. Yes. Oh, you looked at so, it and didn't even enjoy it. And my dad that got one. two pieces of bread, but he hid them behind the drink menu. He sent so me a picture of the little menu thing hiding his dad's bread. It was pretty cute. But I, uh, I'm, while we're, I, I, I plan my cheats, and I don't like calling them cheats because they're planned. They're not cheating. They're just off diet. I am very intentional about when I eat non-keto and probably about every three weeks I'll now, now I went no, five or six months solid. Um, yeah, before. But now because I'm pretty much where I want to be, I still have so I probably have more composition change than weight you need change. To stop. You're Sorry. Shaking I need to put on muscle and still have a little more fat to lose. But I'm very intentional about my cheat meals and I eat one meal, I go and get what I want to eat. I tell her about it. Yeah. Um, and, no, our son will tell me about it. And she asks, do you want me to comment on that? And I say, no, I'm just letting you know. And then the next day, I'm He's back I into get, ketosis. Get, <laughs> I'm not necessarily back into ketosis. And I don't, I don't feel that her. meal. So. My last one, I lost weight that night. But, um, but that was, but I planned those. Yeah. And that's, that's really my advice for you. If you're going to cheat, I'm, if you're gonna have, have if you're a going plan. to a if you're going to a Super Bowl party or something or a Christmas party, let us know. Yeah, one we'll, if you if you know that if you know that you're gonna be in a position where you're most likely gonna eat something, yeah, you have to know your body because I would be, I know my body well enough that I know that I can eat a hamburger and onion rings and I'm not gonna feel it the next day. She can't. So that's taken into account in whether or not she has cheat meals and what she has on those cheat meals. Yeah. So what? Know and your really when I, know yourself. When, I'm, but she, when I say I'm cheating, it really is just a lazy day. Fast. I don't. I'm not fasting and I'm not tracking. No. To me, that's a cheat day because, and I might feel it the next day. No. To be honest with you, I even though I'm not technically cheating, eating anything off keto, I'll still feel no. it just because my body is that sensitive. Um, and there's, I, I know the majority isn't like that, but I know there's some out there that are that way. And I, I want you to know that you're not alone and but, we can, we can lock arms and power through it together and but some live of this just, the rest of our life on keto. <laughs> but something that just pains me to see is all these people and not in this group, but in, I see it in a lot of other groups where people get on and they'll just be like, I messed up at a party last night, or I ate, I, I messed up, I went out to eat and I got fajitas. What do I do? And like, how do I, how do I correct it? And I'm like, just, just don't, just, just eat the way you did up until mm -hmm. that point. Eat the way you did the day before that. You'll get an, it's, it's now, kind I of would this, I would advise to advise if to you fast. want to fast that'll that'll, that'll do really it but help. but there's so much stress built into that response yeah. and again it's like it's almost as if there's this perception that ketosis is a one-time deal you get into it and if you mess up and get out of it you're just screwed and you're never going to get back into it again and it's not it's yeah, and you're 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 in it for the long, we're in it for the long run. You might not be, you might be in it just to lose weight and go back. I would highly recommend you, against that, but, but we, if that's your choice, that's your choice. Yeah. But, um, but I'm, I see so many people and it's not that you're worried and want to get back into ketosis. It's just that you can tell by their response that, and by all the emojis they use that they're really stressed out about it. And stress is just as bad for your body as carbs. Stress is worse for your body than carbs. So, yeah, that's why, that is part of the reason why I plan out my cheat meals because I like food and I'm not going to, and I've found a way to cook and make food where I don't feel deprived. Uh, but I still, I know I'm not going to go the rest of my life and never eat pizza and never eat hamburgers and, potatoes and that kind of stuff and but see, i'm like i'll never i will i'll never go the rest of my life not eating those but i will make the keto version right so i being okay but she I already has like, to have the gluten-free version right so. so it's like and i take into account that 
I mean, I've been gluten free for eight year over eight years yeah. now. I take into account that it was actually fairly easy for me to restrict my diet because I have already been restricting my diet for so many years being celiac. And yeah, you have a personal chef. So. I do. I have a personal chef. Yeah. It's good. He's cute too, huh? Um, yeah. But I'm. Just... But so I. When I go off, if I, I'm not going to go off keto, but when I want to indulge and say some pizza, I'm going to make a mm -hmm. keto pizza because I can. And I feel so much more, there's so many more options now because keto is gluten free and everyone's coming up with these keto solutions. And it's like, it's yeah. not just gluten, it's keto. So it's even more restrictive, but I can have so many more things. And, and you I, know why it tastes, it, and the, because it's got fat. It's got cheese and <laughs> it butter so in good it. Like, it's got it's not made out of potato and rice. It's got exactly. cheese and butter. Uh, Jennifer asked if I study body types. Um, the bot, Dr. Berg, his body types of the adrenal and the, all that. I briefly studied those. Um, I'm very interested in them, but um, and I figured out that actually I don't think I actually figured out which body type I am. I'm probably adrenal. I don't know. Um, that's kind of the common one. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I haven't studied them in depth. I plan on it. That just, I kind of, when I was on that road to studying, something distracted me and I went that way. Um, oh, I just made it really dark. Sorry. So that's kind of how my, the way my study route goes, like I'm studying right now, I'm still studying intermittent fasting. And I picked up Dr. Jason Fung's book, The Obesity Code, which I highly recommend. I've just started it. Highly recommend that. And also I mentioned Dr. Ken Berry. Um, this is his book. I haven't read yet. But supposed to be great. I really like him. He and Nisha, his wife, are really fun. Um, but yeah, so I when I study, I kind of get on something, and then I go until something else distracts me, and then I go on that until something distracts me, and I just I love learning, and I think the body is fascinating, um, just the way everything is connected, and I just I just think it's really really cool. So if you have anything you want me to study just shoot me an email and I would love to, to research it some more because that's just something I love doing. And, and it's important to note that like, you know, that whole understanding how your body burns fat and what it does with those cells when you're armed with that knowledge of like, it puts water there for a little bit. And then like when you're armed with that knowledge, those bounces become less stressful. Yeah. And that's where if you, and, we are here to help and be a resource. We want to. Um, I'll be safe. The hurricane is messing yeah. up with some people. Be safe. But we're we're here to be a resource to, and answer whatever questions you have. It's really hot in here. But I mean, it's important that you and and feel free to ask questions and and we'll try and answer them. But it's important that you know some of those base things, if only so you can just avoid the stress of, of not knowing. If you, when you understand the process of burning fat, stalls and bounces become just a, it's just, a typical it's just thing. like and you can't, you can't avoid them and they become a lot less stressful. So, and just always research at least at a base level and ask questions and whether that's us or somebody else, just, but she loves to research. She loves to, and you no probably stuff. can't see that. Okay. That is my the last month. And you can see all the up and downs. I mean, those are multiple pound yeah. increments. Um, that's between, yeah, that's four pound increments up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That was last month. So, and you know, that's, that's normal. My body was going through something. I lost inches. My body just was going through it. And so you and I do weigh every day or every other day, um, so I can I can see that, and I have confidence in seeing that and kind of being like, okay, so that's what my body's going. Or um, I had a shoot on Sunday, and I did a lot of squatting, so my legs and my tushy are really just I'm inflamed because I use those muscles, I stress those muscles, so I retain some water, so I was up a little bit, like. But I knew that and I expected it. And so I love seeing that and seeing how I can kind of like, I wake up in the morning and I know I'm, I'm hurting a little bit. Okay, I'm going to be up. And then I am. And it's like, ha, huh, I knew it. And I just, there's something about knowing that and kind of knowing the secrets behind what's going on in your body. I do wish that autophagy would give a timetable about what it's doing. Like, 
after I'm done fasting, it's like, hey, I just worked a little bit on your stomach. You'll notice it in a few days. Like, I just really wish I would know what's going on with autophagy. But instead, I just kind of have to take pictures yeah. and, and reflect. So okay. it is already 9 o'clock. So we are probably going to wrap it up in just a second. Here's the one thing I'd say about that, Lisa. Like, this is, that's what my, age? this is not to... Um, you're out of focus. This is this is not my full weight loss. This is the major, the major drop, in I hate to only weigh on the days that I'm bouncing, and you never know. Again, that the from a mentality standpoint, it's and everyone's different, and but the more you can separate. Some people throw away their scale, and yeah. I. But, but the more, more you can like, separate totally, the. Totally and, fine. But the more you can separate the the value from the actual number on the scale, it's it's an indicator, but it's relative to a lot of things. If you start putting on muscle, you're gonna if you're losing fat and gaining muscle, your weight's gonna stall. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're putting on more muscle than you are losing fat, your weight's gonna go up. But it's important and that that weighing and I weighed every day just so I could see See those fluctuations. See that. Again, those bounces are good. Those bounces are an indication that you're doing the right thing. You are you are making room for water. Uh, and that's those bounces are water filling those empty fat cells. So bounces are good. Stalls are good because you're even that little chart that shows the drop off and then the healing and then you start burning fat. That drop off like that that long stall from healing is that's a sign that you're disrupting your body. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're doing good things. So I, and, and I just, I'd hate to personally, I would hate to weigh once a week and end up only weighing on the days that I'm up. So I weigh, I don't weigh as much anymore, but in that 60 pound weight loss, I weighed every day um, just so I could keep up with it and, and know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, Thank I'm going to ask Jennifer. a few more. Inter um, I haven't read Why We Get Fat, and I don't know if I've heard of it. I probably have. Um, it's what, definitely one to look into. Let me know what you think about it, Rebecca. Um, when I drink gold coffee, do I do MCT oil and coconut oil or either one? I would do either one only because, you, I mean, if you have MCT oil, use MCT oil. If you don't have MCT oil, I'd use coconut oil because it has, 60% um, of it is the MTT, the medium train triglycerides. You know what I make? If I was going to make a bulletproof coffee, I would probably use just grass fed butter or grass fed ghee. Um, and yeah, or, or I don't know. I haven't made it in a long time, you guys. I really just make my, my bone broth latte and I use that with ghee and MCT oil. Um, so I would just, just choose your, your fat. I mean, but it's yours and you can make it however you want, however it tastes good to you it's totally up to you there's no like one bulletproof coffee if you want to use coconut oil and mct oil go for it like it's totally up to you it's just not what i would do um and the one other thing on the, the weighing and the kind of cheat meal topic is we something that i did because again like the second half of july and pretty much all of august i wasn't doing keto because of work and i was just traveling and it wasn't it wasn't worth the effort to manage it but I was 185 when that when that month and a half started, and um, and I gave myself 10 pounds. I was um, yeah, that's Roxy. This is our Roxy. Roxy girl. the Roxy. Um, I gave myself 10 pounds. I drew a I had a red line at 195 pounds, and I I ended up gaining seven pounds in that month. That that went back off in about a week or two, but even when we get down to our goal weights, when Allison gets to hers and when I'm at mine and we start doing that, or if you have to go off keto for a little bit, just do it with a plan. So we will always have, and it helps us hold each other accountable. Yeah. We'll always have a red line that like, if I, life is going to get in the way, we're going to fluctuate in weight. But like, if I gain back 10 pounds, whatever that that bottom number is, when I get to this weight, if I can't justify it, because I'm starting to put on noticeable amounts of muscle and things like that then that's that becomes like a red flag that okay this is not like yeah I need complacency to, I need to. has gotten to so that was my if i had gotten to 195 in august 
I would have started packing lunches and eating keto again because I knew going into it, this is this is my margin that I'm giving myself. If I go out of this, then I need to change things. And that's, it's just, it's accountability. And we hold each other accountable and we've worked really hard to get to a place where we can hold each other accountable when it yeah. comes to weight. That took a long time. I mean, but, because when your husband says, hey, brave, or yeah, it's, as you weigh today, what'd you weigh? Uh, you know, it's kind of, you get defensive. Yeah. But, but now, you, I, I know he's doing it out of love. If you need that, if you're going to go, and on the party thing, what we were saying is like, if you're go, if you go to a Christmas party or Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving is coming up, if you know going into it, like if your plan is to not eat keto, but you know going into it that you're probably going to have stuffing because you're going to someone else's house and there's not going to, like, and the reality of you eating raw broccoli and a little bit of of turkey and none of the Staying other good the stuff. And yeah. that way and if, if that's your reality and you decide that you want to make the choice to just go ahead and eat that, eat that way, plan on it, and then get back on it on Friday morning. But if you need to let someone know, if you need to let us know or post on the group, hey, I'm going to eat Thanksgiving dinner, but I'll be back Friday morning. We'll do our best to follow up with yeah, you. Just, if, and hopefully, you and hopefully there's accountability there and you have someone, because face-to-face is always better, but if you've got someone that you're doing this journey with, let them know. Like Friday morning after Thanksgiving, that's like I'm back on it. So ask me about it. But um, that just accountability is important with everything. But especially this, just we found a lot of value in. Yeah, I. There were there's a period of time where I I cheated on my diet and didn't tell her about it and it was like this I felt like I was hiding something and he, it's a lot he easier wasn't very good at hiding I was for a the food weeks. in the car I was for a couple weeks but there was but it's just a lot easier to know hey this is what's actually going on so ask me tomorrow like don't let me do it again tomorrow and so well we are gonna wrap it up tonight because it is already 9 12 so we've been on here for well over an hour so thank you guys for hopping on and interacting. We really love the interactions. And Are there any questions before we go? Any like? Oh, I have a question. I know there's only seven people. We'll put a poll on the on the site, but something we're working on, not we, I'm working on Thanksgiving and Christmas recipes. Which is uh, why he was yes. working on the pumpkin bread. Working on pumpkin bread, it failed today. Uh, it's but with those it seems like a regular pumpkin pie uses like a cup of sugar which is a cup of alternative sugar which is way more expensive than a cup of sugar so would it be more beneficial to have one or two serving recipes for that kind of stuff like a small serving of of keto dressing or would you rather have how to make a full meal's worth i don't I, Seems to me like most people are probably not going to be eating in a setting where everyone is eating keto. So basically, would it be benefit more beneficial for you to have single serving or one or two serving recipes versus like a serving here's how to make six. an entire keto yeah. pumpkin pie? Because then yeah. everyone, and all those non-keto people are eating your keto pumpkin pie, and that's rude. So, yeah, I can go eat the regular one. Uh, yeah, my... My inclination would be smaller servings, but let me know. And for me, I like smaller servings, especially for things that are more treat keto treats, um, just because you don't overindulge. But all right. Hmm. Well, we will see you guys later. If you have any quite please, I'll look back on here. If you have any questions um, that we didn't answer, um, I'll come through here and answer them. And if you need your macros calculated, you can always email me. I posted that earlier. Um, you can email burls.go.keto at gmail. Um, and jump over to our YouTube page if you haven't and subscribe. YouTube. Uh, we got to our 100 subscribers Yay. on Sunday. So we're youtube.com slash burlsgoketo. So you guys can jump over there and subscribe because... Um, that, that'll be yeah. the easiest place to keep up with everything that we post. Yeah. Uh, We'll post things there. But other than that, we love this group. We're so happy you guys are yeah. here with us and um, doing this keto journey with us. And 
yeah it's feel just... free to share share the page invite anyone you want if you have friends that are doing it yeah. too definitely it's public so yep. you can you can invite your friends so we yeah. love i mean keto has changed so many people's lives and so if we can help to um encourage and um support other people we would we would just love to do that to help change other people's lives so and on youtube we've got I think what's your I'm editing the keto flu video now. Yeah, I've got because a keto flu video coming up. What to she, do, how to yeah. cure your keto flu. And how to like electrolytes and stuff like that. Mm. Just supplements that you... I've got that coming uh, up. And then next week we'll have probably mozzarella sticks for the cooking video. We've also got Instant Pot pulled pork and the chocolate coconut ice cream and then we also have all of our real-time videos yeah we did some real-time cooking videos you guys can watch us cook our yeah. lunches and stuff like that on there so that's all coming all right we've we've prolonged or whatever our goodbye so you guys have a great night i'm praying for all those that are getting hit with the hurricane um stay safe and yeah we will Hope see you guys. stocked up on heavy cream and <laughs> heavy cream. and cheese before it hit so um but uh, we'll see you guys through the page, and we'll be here next Wednesday at 8. That was one of the things I saw on one of the keto pages from someone in the past. It's like, what do I buy? I don't, I don't eat bread or milk. I bet everyone said fast. Yeah. All right. You guys have see a good night. Bye. Bye. You got to end it. I know.